that says live assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters i hope everyone is doing well and having a beautiful day that beautiful sunday <laughs> it's so very early where i am so it's 11 o'clock um in the morning here and um, my guest is all the way in australia so it's a completely different time over there um so today i've got a very special guest on uh, a muslim brother based in australia like i said who goes by the title of imam rami he has a youtube channel called the one muslim and um brother you do very great work uh, we're going to get into all the good work that you do um, you're very pious and you always put deen first you've great knowledge of the deen um, so assalamu alaikum welcome uh, how are you i'm excited to have you on today uh, mashallah thank you for having me um alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh yes thank you for having me it's uh, uh it's been in the works for a while i know but we got to it eventually yeah. Yes, we did. It always ends up like that with these things. Like you start off and actually getting to the point of, of getting it through is very difficult. Um, Alhamdulillah, brother, your father to, to a beautiful boy and a beautiful girl. I've met your, your daughter on, on a live stream before, mashallah. She's gorgeous and um, just seems like such a, a good soul. And you take your role as a parent very seriously, which is great to see because I think as, as Muslims, we definitely do, especially if we're living in Western countries. And you value sort of the future of Muslim children in general is very important, which is great. Um, so much so that you've you know built a school, uh, mashallah. You've built a school in Indonesia and working on opening a masjid for Muslim girls. Um, so I want to discuss sort of all of that and how that how that sort of led you to that point. But if we can just start, sort of go back and start with sort of you know you have an interesting history and a good level of knowledge, like I said. So can you share a bit? About your your background and sort of your journey to Islam or into how your journey from Islam has been. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Um, again, I just want to thank you for for having me on. Uh, even though at times I sometimes feel that I'm insignificant in the whole scheme of things, uh, it's been a pleasure connecting with you and to get to know your husband offline as well. Uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you and your family. Allahumma amin. Um, you know, I do have keep. I do sometimes keep things secret. I kind of don't say much about anything online and kind of disclose it as it goes because um, I don't like to share a lot of things online because I like to protect myself and my family from envy, from hasad, from evil eye. And even the best of us can fall victim to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's good to have uh, the right intentions when doing anything. But I'm happy to go through a, bit, a brief history about myself and give you a bit of an exclusive peek, even though it's nothing very interesting. But I'm born in Melbourne, Australia, and I've had the passion for for, for Dean and sitting with scholars from an early age. Um, I traveled to pursue some knowledge and sat with scholars in Yemen in, 20, in 20, 2006, where I attended classes and lectures both in Rubat Tarim and Dar al-Mustafa, uh, then left to Syria and uh, attended lectures for, uh, for students, for international students with Sheikh Mohammed Yaqubi, uh, in, and uh, in addition to other lectures around masjids, around Damascus, uh, I've obtained several general ijazas in Hadith and Qur'an from various scholars and several chains of transmissions in traditional, to traditional scholars like Imam al-Bukhari, Muslim and Nawawi and others. Uh, shortly after my return home um, from overseas, I was um, appointed as an office manager, Imam and Khatib at one of the Muslim councils where I served for, served for nearly two years, representing over 45 community societies around the state. Um, I represented the Muslim community in uh, the Victoria Police Multi-Faith Advisory Board and sat on other interfaith boards with other faith leaders at the time. Uh, most of my dawah, though, my dawah efforts have been through uh, my extensive travels to Indonesia, but have attended some events in Malaysia and Singapore when they come to. Um, academically, I've also graduated with a Bachelor of Communication, majoring in advertising and currently work in marketing. So I guess you can say I'm a creative student of knowledge and uh, I currently reside in Melbourne with my family and my children. What, what sort of led you to come on to YouTube? Because that is a big step. I mean, it was a big step for us to come to YouTube. So what sort of made you, you take that step? Well, I kind of took a step back from being very active in the community. Uh, for several family reasons uh, and whatnot. Um, so then I just felt that I needed a bit more of a purpose to to do something and uh, building an audience isn't easy. So, you know, yeah. stuff I had planned in my mind, I can't achieve those until I, really, I, I reach a certain goal, um, like, you know, planning lessons, uh, online lessons um, of covering a particular te text in Shafi Fuqh, for example, or, um, you know, 40 Hadith of Imam Nawawi or something like that. 
um, or things that I have ijazah with, uh, it's, I just feels like it's difficult to do that when you only have, you know, a low amount of number because the view count is going to be so low. So, you know, if and when uh, the channel grows, there will be a possibility for a bit more coming from me and I'll be able to build a bit more of a team, I hope. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Inshallah, that's great. I mean, you, you've <clears throat> clearly done a lot of research and you've got a lot of knowledge and um, I know you said before you you grew up, you went to an Islamic school and, and like, you, I mean, it can clearly that helps. You know, I think a lot of times people are like, oh, if you go to an Islamic school, you might get stuck and you might not be able to um, sort of be successful in other areas in life. But you need Islam to then be successful in other areas in life. So it's beautiful to see someone that's come through that and um, to see how successful you are, brother, which is yeah, great. I, I, I wouldn't say I have much knowledge. I think I'm lacking all the time. There's, the, the, you know, when you sit with scholars, when you sit yeah. with scholars, you realize how much you don't know. Um, yeah. You know, not not even to say, you know, if someone's a layman Muslim, you know, it's just, it's it's vast. You know, mm-hmm. It's a big ocean of sciences that we have in Islam. So mm-hmm. I, I'm nothing but a drop in the ocean. Really, yeah. nothing. We can all learn more. We can all definitely do better. Um, you had a recent trip, like you said, you go to Indonesia quite a lot, but you had a recent trip to, to build a school for orphaned girls, which is very noble and a charitable cause. And I, I saw sort of videos, mashallah, online, and the girls all looked really happy. And um, you shared, I think you shared videos with, with my husband as well, and you were talking about it with him, and he was telling me. So um, can you share sort of the backstory behind this and, and what was the sort of, how do you go about it? You know, people that might want to do it, I mean, it, it seems like an easy task to go build a school. I'm sure it's, it's a lot more difficult than, than just going to do that. Yeah, um, it does have a bit of a backstory, <clears throat> and I can't claim everything is done by myself. Um, but the backstory is actually a, a very touching story. Uh, it's defined by the sudden loss of life, actually, whereby a cherished family whom I've known for as long as I could remember lost their eldest son in a tragic car accident. Now, uh, in September 2019, an incident occurred where a young named where a young man named uh, Abdul Qadir Munajid. Uh, who was an aspiring electrician aged 23 years old, lost his life in a car accident, a car accident on his way home after Friday prayers, where he lost control of his vehicle and collided with a tree. Now, touched by this deep tragedy, his father, who again I said he's well known to me and he's known me ever since I was a boy, uh, his name is Samir Munajid, he reached out to me and knew I was the founder of Humanitarian Hearts, which is a charity I set up in 2014, which nobody knows about online other than me disclosing it to you today. And I have extensive contacts in Indonesia through my dawa efforts. So the request was the family wanted to raise funds to establish a sadaqa jariya, a perpetual charity, in honour and memory of their late son. So the father pulled together much of his contacts from family, friends and colleagues and With the assistance from another foundation called Rogers Foundation, a fundraising boxing event went forward, which we all attended and they raised some money there. And then suddenly late 2019, as you know, COVID hit and the city was locked down for nearly two years here in Melbourne, which halted our progress completely. There was nothing we could do. So once things opened up, we were back at it again. And this was the amana for me because it was a promise and a trust that I gave to the father. And I made uh, made him know that I will see this through to the end, inshallah, before he he dies. Because, you know, he was worried, is he going to be alive to see this, you know, come to fruition? Um, because things take so long these days. So um, I reconnected with my contacts in Indonesia. And after diligent searching for months, an old friend of mine of 15 years in Indonesia, Ustad Zaid, was like a beacon of goodness for the cause, alhamdulillah. Now, Ustaz Zaid already uh, has a branch of a Quran Tahfiz school and he wants to open another branch um, of a Quran Tahfiz school for, for a boarding school for orphan girls. And I say boarding school because they actually sleep, eat, study oh. there. Yeah, they've got bunk beds and everything. So their whole life is around the Quran and around Arabic, um, which is amazing. And that resonated, resonated with me very deeply. So I put it forward to the family and, and the same thing happened. They resonated with They thought, this is great. So... The Nurul Quran Tahfiz School in Chibadak Sukabumi emerged as a promising partner with us. So we joined forces and to get this meaningful project to the operational stage. Mm -hmm. And the intention was to get it operational by mid-2013. And a significant milestone was reached and I've been quiet this whole time. (laughs) So the official opening of the school was locked in for Wednesday the 24th of August 2023, which was just like two weeks ago. Yeah. So after nearly four years of wait of waiting 
to see this sadaqa jariya become a reality, we arranged that uh, Samir Munajid, his family, myself and my wife to be present at this milestone event in Indonesia. And that's really sort of the brief backstory. Wow, mashallah. And how, how did it feel? I mean, obviously, finally opening up and seeing all the girls there and seeing them benefit from it. I mean, how did that feel? Um, it felt really good to, to actually be in the location because, um, you know, they were scouting for land uh, and they found, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a great uh, piece of block, which is like 2,500 square meters and um, had a few two buildings on it already. And they built a, set, a third building on it. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, but it's operational. And that was the intention to establish the school to get it to operational. Um, and, and that's what we've done. Uh, so subhanallah it was it was good to see the girls there it was good to see that a lot of the invitate inv in people that were invited on the day were also the surrounding locals so all the women from the surrounding local uh, uh you know vicinity uh, who lived next to the school in the street the next block were all invited to see what we were doing <clears throat> and in addition to that they have a very special thing in indonesia called majlis ta'lim which is a a, a, a group or a a, a circle of knowledge where people sit and learn their din. Now there's circles of knowledge for men, there's circle of knowledge for men and women, and then there's circles of knowledge for women with women. So we invited the women because it's a girls only tahfil school. So we invited the women of that majlis ta'lim, that circle of knowledge with their ustada, and they attended as well to, you know, celebrate in, in the opening of a school in their, in, their, in their town, in their vicinity. And alhamdulillah, uh, a, lot, a lot of people came um the the local chief who was also a female which i didn't know <laughs> she rocked up she was invited and um the other board members of the school uh, also the managing uh, more board members of the school uh, including ustaz zaid and his family they all attended and obviously you know us from melbourne australia we went there to attend the the official opening ceremony and uh it was it was great you know i i really you know every time i go to indonesia i don't want to come back i love indonesia <laughs> I've never been. It's actually on my list to go. I've never been. Um, we've got quite a lot of places on our list, but it is somewhere that I would like to go and see. Um, mashallah, that's that's a beautiful story, and to something so tragic to start, and then something so good to come out of that. You know, it just shows that Allah works in mysterious ways, and and He has a plan for for us all. Um, yes. So it's great that that you've definitely done that, Mashallah. Um, you also started a fundraising effort for a masjid for these orphan girls. Can you can you provide sort of some insights into into that and and how yeah. people can help? Yeah. Um, while we were there, because I was there only for the. Uh, official opening ceremony, right? I, I thought I'd have enough time to do a proper tour around. I didn't have time because there was just people coming and cars are starting to pack up and I I couldn't be, uh, you know, going around filming and talking to the camera too much, um, being that I'm the main, one of the main, you know, guests from overseas. So um, I took a brief tour. I snuck one in very, very quickly, like uh, just to the back where I had, I, I saw my team, a few of my Indonesian team, brother Ando, brother Puji, and Brother Iman, Salam Alaikum, if you're watching, Jazakumullah Khair, they were there talking with Ustaz Zaid saying what the next project was. And so I, I kind of walked in on him and I'm like, okay, we're going to be building a masjid here. And I'm like, oh God, um, it took me a while. So I'm thinking it wasn't mentioned to me that we needed a masjid. So I was shown where, where, where the prop, I was shown where on the property they wanted to build a masjid. And I thought to myself, how can, an, how can a school for orphan girls that specializes in the Arabic language and Quran Tahfiz not have a masjid. Yes. So I just, <laughs> just like, how did that skip us, you know? Because we're yeah. just focused on opening and, and being, being operational. So I decided that once I got back to Australia, I'll launch a GoFundMe online and let people know what we really achieved and see who resonates with the cause to help out. Yeah. And that's what kind of happened, you know? Um, it's a very interesting area where they want to, where they want to build a masjid. There's already two fish ponds that, already there that's filled with fish so the idea is they want to build um uh, uh, they want to build a masjid on top of the fish ponds because that fish ponds that they're going to be using they want to use it like a fish farm where they can produce meat to either sell to the market or provide it as fish to eat for the, for the 50 or 60 girls that are going to be on site so i thought that's a great idea and I'm like okay cool i could see where it was what was happening i'm like all right cool you know you just concrete posts go up and then you know the concrete floor and a stairs goes up and you got a masjid <laughs> um, being built there so it's really good it's it's um it's it's really good to have a, a site at this at this yeah. size alhamdulillah 
Is there a sort of a specific timeline that you've got for completing the construction of the masjid and what is like sort of the total cost that you need? Like, do you need mm. what resources can you do you need to achieve this goal? Um, well, ideally, I would. It just all depends on who's 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 coming to to the aid and standing beside me and sharing, you know, in the reward. Uh, ideally, I would love to reach the goal of this uh, uh, cause in twelve months. So then I can start making arrangements for the design and the construction, which that's going to take, you know, time. So we can't make any uh, uh, plans if we don't have the funds, uh, you know, available. So the yeah. estimated cost from what we we could see talking to somebody was thirty thousand US dollars. So that's approximately forty five to forty six thousand Australian dollars. And doing a quick calculation on xe.com, it was twenty four thousand British pounds. Wow. Um, but this is a masjid with the wudu area, with with the carpet, with the tiles, with the uh, the painting, with the furnishings, the storage room, the toilets, the speaker system, and so on. So it's all up, ready to go. You know, twenty four thousand British pounds or thirty thousand US dollars. Um, so I can share that I was directly informed also um, by a brother who's in the who, who actually operates an architectural interior and building construction business in Indonesia is going to donate donate for the masjid building drawings once the goal is achieved. Wow. So we have someone in Indonesia who's going to donate uh, having those drawings done up, alhamdulillah, once the goal is achieved and they're, they're taking care of that cost. So, yeah. you know, there are people who can help, but we need to we need to get that stage to go, okay, we're done with the with raising the funds and what can we do next? So once the goal is achieved, then everything can start falling into place and getting this masjid complete, inshallah. And I know there will be some brothers in Indonesia who will, you know, lend a helping hand when they can, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. I, I really hope though, and, and it's great to see that everybody's sort of getting behind this cause and really wanting to help out because it is such a big thing. And, you know, it's not just about our afterlife and getting the reward for the afterlife. It's even in this life to help people that are struggling and that don't have, mm. are not as fortunate as, as us. It's, it's good for your soul um, and just good for your, your mind as well to help someone. So um, I'm really glad that you're doing this, brother. Yeah, definitely. Um, When you're helping someone who's uh, less fortunate, you know, it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a feeling in your heart that there's a satisfaction there. And I guess I've chased that for 15 years and, and I've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Um, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, we've just got a super chat in, so I'll just read this out from Michael. Hello, Muslim mom. I'm a former Christian pastor who converted to Islam after a former church member showed me a video of yours debunking Christianity. Um, I said my shahada and became a Muslim. Thank you for converting me to Islam. Wow. Um, that's, <laughs> I have heard, I, I briefly heard this story and um, it made me so happy. Like honestly filled my heart. Welcome Michael to Islam. I'm so glad that you've come to Islam. May Allah bless you and grant you oh, yeah. so many blessings and um, encourage you to stay in Islam and encourage and I encourage all my brothers and sisters to reach out to Michael, help him on this journey, encourage him and encourage others. Um, I know that the, the, the you and Sam, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, definitely, definitely. Michael, don't be afraid to, to send the Muslim mum an email. Yes. Um, you're also welcome to send me an email. I'm happy to communicate with you, man. Um, anytime. No problem. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was great. It's like such a great story. Uh, Sam was a Christian that converted to Islam from watching the videos and then he went to church and, and um, showed his church pastor the videos and the church pastor has now converted to Islam. So, mashallah, makes me feel good because a lot of effort was put into that specific video that, that you're talking about. Um, and um, yeah, so that that is the goal, isn't it? To bring people to Islam, really. So, yeah, um, we I just present the truth. Channel. I think actually, uh, Michael's in Australia. Um, so I, obviously, I don't know whereabouts in Australia, but I, I know that Brother Rami's in He's Australia. Welcome to, yeah, welcome to contact me. Uh, the, Mus the the one Muslim podcast at gmail.com. You're welcome to contact yeah, me. Yeah, and the, the links to yeah. your, your YouTube should, should be in the description. So um, please go, go on over to there. Definitely. So, welcome. Um, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> brother, we get back to you. Um, sure, alhamdulillah. So, um, I know that sort of what what do you think the main challenges have been or opposition you've had to sort of face in building the school and the masjid really what are the main major issues that you've had um I don't think there's much opposition well look when anyone gets involved in charitable cause, charitable causes you definitely do get opposition now 
Sadly, the type of opposition is from the Muslim community themselves sometimes. You see, envy and jealousy is rampant in our community. And you see this once you do this sort of work. Why? Because many people will shut you down. Sometimes you even lose friends over it. And you realize exactly who is with you for the sake of Allah and who isn't. Now, some people in life do not like to see you achieve anything. Maybe they feel you are taking attention away from them or something. I don't know what it is, but sheer selfishness is apparently very clear sometimes. About not many people wish you well. And the trust is, is it's difficult to please everybody. And that's just the reality. I can't please everybody. And that's yeah. fine. But wallahi, although it is a slow progress and it requires a lot of patience, but for every so-called contact lost, for every backbiting that happened, for every person who shut you down when you asked them to stand beside you and share in the reward, yet they distance themselves or ignore you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces them with three or four people who resonate with what you do. And it seems there is a few people who are on board with me recently, I've been contacted through social media, whom don't know me personally at all. Yet they know who, uh, they know who they are. They're probably watching right now. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us to accomplish great things, to serve those who are disadvantaged in our ummah, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, and this is one of the biggest things, I mean, especially sort of in our dawah scene that we see everybody's sort of like separating and there's just, but there's just a lot of like negativity coming into it. And yeah. I think you have to actually look at what is the main purpose of us doing this. And it's to help less fortunate, it's to help people come to Islam, to help yeah. each other, you know, and if we're not helping each other, then how can we help others? So I definitely, definitely, definitely think, brother, you're right in that aspect. Um and it's sad to hear that, that that is a challenge that you faced. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's people just, I guess, have group mentalities. He's not from my group or he's from a different manhaj or something. It's like, uh, it, I'm not about that. I'm just about, if you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and you're under the umbrella of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, welcome. You're my brother. Now, many people, I treat them with maybe too much kindness in the beginning. Then they start to think, you know, what's his deal? <laughs> the real yeah. deal? There is no deal. I'm just being me. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Um, and when I put a call out, the call out isn't to save me. The call out is an opportunity. The call out is for me to like, look, there's something that is going to be beneficial, something noble, something um, that's going to be rewarding for your life and your hereafter. And that is to share in a reward of helping someone, right? So I'm not calling for anything other than stand beside me to do a good act, stand beside me to do a good deed. Because why? Because I know that together we can accomplish this. And, and we can accomplish much more if we work together. Yeah. Now, th th there's, there's always people who are wanting to, you know, uh, it reminds me of a hadith uh, of the Prophet where, where, where he says along the lines um, uh, where there's, there's going to there's gonna come a time where nations are going to surround you and each person is going to pick at you from a different, you know, like they're eating out of, uh, out of a food, out of a plate. And when are we going to wake up to this? Yeah. It's happening right now. We're not yep. standing together. We're no. not. And then, like, what am I doing other than I'm traveling and, you know, using my own wealth to go to another country to help a, a, an orphan, you know, to open up a school? Because in the end, I don't know what's going to tip my scale. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I try to do what I can. I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm, I, I fall short on many things. I'm human. But yes. what, what can I do? What is doable for me? Yes. And that's what I try to do. Yeah, and that's all I can. You know, you just have good intentions with all, all you, you know, with all, try to have good intentions with everything you do in life. You're right, brother. You're de you're definitely right. I mean, I was on a live yesterday, Sister Navida, Sister Navida's in the chat. Well, like Islam, Sister M, and we were talking about this. You know, about um, what you get when you're in Jannah. And I, you know, one of the things that we mm -hmm. we were saying is that well, don't think about what you get when you're there. You know, try and get there. You know, what can you do in this <laughs> life to get to Jannah? You know, and I I said I I don't feel I definitely have not done enough. I have not done enough at all. Um, to feel like and it's one of my biggest fears is that I don't feel like I'm worthy enough to go there because I've not done enough in this life and um, right. that should always be something that's actually there because if you think that you've done enough and that you're going to Jannah you know you've got that, a problem yeah, there's, there's it's an a problem issue. of the heart really yes, it's a disease that, of the heart yes yeah, so definitely think about what you can keep doing to get to Jannah there's, there's never enough you can you can never do too much um, can you tell like the viewers what sort of the benefits are of building the masjid and you know what the reward in Islam is for doing such a good deed, especially for orphan children? We know orphans are spoken about quite a lot in the Quran. Um, yeah, so if you could tell us, us about that, please, brother. Uh, certainly. I mean, 
uh, there's an ayah in, in Surah Al-Baqarah in 254, verse 254, which means, O believers, give from what we have provided for you before the arrival of the day, when there will be no bargaining, there will be no friendship or intercession. Those who disbelieve are truly the wrongdoers. Now, this particular verse teaches us that an a, a important principle. Now, this important principle is whatever we have received and whatever we own really comes from Allah, not from you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by giving in his cause, we are inviting more of his blessings into our life. Mm -hmm. And some of the benefits of charity, it protects you from calamity. How does, how does it collect, uh, protect you from calamity? That, that the Prophet wasallam said in a hadith uh, that was uh, reported by Imam al-Tirmidhi that give charity without delay for it stands in the way of calamity. Mm -hmm. So it's like a shield for you. Mm -hmm. It is a good deed that never ends. Yes. There's a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, when a man dies, his deeds come to an end except for three things. Sadaqa jariya, mm -hmm. a perpetual charity. Knowledge which is beneficial. If you write a book about Islam, for example, a text and, and that stays in print after you pass, that's a, uh, you know, it's knowledge being passed down or something that you teach someone else who then teaches it to someone else. Also, mm -hmm. Like the, these, these girls studying, studying Quran, being tahfid, they will end up being teachers and teach other people and other people. So it's, a, it's an unimaginable, unimaginable uh, uh, amount of barakah, right? And the third, a virtuous descendant or an, uh, an offspring who prays for him, for the deceased. Now this is what the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that related by Muslim. Now the charity also will be a, a shade on the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ said, the believer's shade on the day of resurrection will be his chari charity. Ah. And it protects you also from hellfire. Where in Muslim there's a hadith that says, protect yourself from hellfire even by giving a piece of date as charity. Mm -hmm. What else? People think, oh, you know what? If I give something, if I give that 50 or 100, I'm going to decrease. Wallahi, you don't decrease. No, Why? you get... You get tenfold back, don't you? You get, yeah, you get tenfold back. But there's a hadith Qudsi also in Al Bukhari and Muslim where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Allah the Exalted says, uh, Spend, O son of Adam, and I shall spend on you. Yeah. yeah. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Spend from what He gave you so that He can spend on you. And yes, in another hadith and, and in the Quran that it, it gets tenfold and up to 700 fold and more. Mm. So, you know, the question is, why are we hesitant? Why do we have this love for dunya so much? Do you know what I mean? We, this is also a part of that particular hadith where I said that the people, the nations are going to, to uh, come around you and take, pick, pick from each and every one of you, like they're eating off a plate. And then they ask the Prophet, oh, oh Rasulullah, are we, is it because we are small in numbers? The Prophet said, La, but Antum Kafirun Kafir Kahutha is sale. You are no, you are you are many in numbers, uh, uh, uncountable. And he goes, How can this happen to us? The Sahaba are asking. Rasulullah says in response, that Al Wahan has entered your hearts. Now this is what this word Al Wahan was never heard prior to this to the Sahaba. So they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what is Wahan? And he responded, حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ The love for this world and the uh, hatred or, or dislike for death. Mm. Love for this world is the reason why we are falling into these problems where everyone's eating at us from around us as a ummah. Yes. Love for this world. Yeah. And it's just a temporary, it's a temporary time that we're here. It's not, we're not here forever. Um, and what mm. we do in this life will affect us in the, the next life. And if I'm honest, brother, you know, I've had times in my life, even as a student, you know, you're struggling and you're not you're not getting lots of money. I was working and things like that. And every time I would give something to charity, I would struggle and I would just give, you know, a t like 10 pounds, a pound, whatever you'd give. Automatically, whatever situation I was in, I, I would come out of it. And I would always yeah. end up with, with some sort of way I would end up with money or with, you know, something good would happen in my life. And um, or I would end up passing my exams, <laughs> you know, like, of <laughs> course, I mean, I'm sure that there was I did. Um, I did contribute to passing my exams. But, um, you know, you know Allah, Allah does provide for us. And like you said, there is always rewards for us in this life and in the next life. And and if you don't get a reward in this life, then you know, Allah tests those who he loves the most. So it doesn't mean that if you're mm -hmm. testing that, you know, Allah has forgotten about you. That's not true. 
let, let me let me give you a, a a something to think about and and our viewers you know our viewers let's give you, let's give you something to think about we are working so hard in this dunya to build the dunya right we're not satisfied with one car we want 10 yes. we're not satisfied with two homes we want 20 we're not satisfied with an investment property you want 50 Okay, now let me tell you one thing. Once we have all this that we've built, this success, right? All this success that we've built. Will the soul love going from a place that you have built to a place that you have not built? Mm -hmm. Will your soul enjoy the transitioning from the dunya to the akhirah? No. Yeah, no. You're not going to enjoy that. You're going to be like, I'm leaving all this behind. Yeah. I, I worked so hard for this. Yeah. I know. So and this is why. That yeah. that. So this is why a, uh, the Muslim character and the Muslim understanding of Islam is that we we work in this dunya, yes, but we have to work in this dunya in conjunction with building the akhirah, mm. not building the dunya and leaving the akhirah. We need mm -hmm. to do both. We can build our dunya, but we need to focus building our dunya, and for whatever we get from building our dunya, we build our akhirah. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, I don't have nothing. I, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything to offer other than my time and my effort. You know, I'm not someone who has, you know, 20 homes and I'm sitting lavish. I, I'm not. Yet, I'm doing what I can to put food in orphans' mouths, to make sure that these orphans are not just fed, that they're educated. Mm -hmm. Right? How do I know how much salat of theirs is going to be accepted that's going to benefit me? What dua is going to benefit me? There's a, there's a, there's a lot of blessings. It's, it's unimaginable. It's like a domino effect. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. imagine feeding one off. Imagine feeding 50, 60. Mm -hmm. Not only you're feeding them and clothing them, that they are becoming Hufad Quran. Mm -hmm. They are becoming the next, the next uh, 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 scholars of Quran. The next Hufad. And who are they? Women. Mm -hmm. They will be women who are going to raise men. <laughs> it's, uh, think about that. <laughs> Who, who raised people like Umar ibn al-Khattab and, and, mm. and, and the Sahaba? Women. Yes. It's highly important that we educate our women, that they know the Qur'an, that they know their deen, so then they can impart that to their children and their neighbors and their neighbors' neighbors and their neighborhood. Right? Why? Because we want to establish a community. We want a community of men. Yes. <laughs> we can't be men without the women. Yes, yes. And the women can't be women without the men. You're right, brother. You're so right, and it's so refreshing to hear someone just break it, break it down to to that level. I think there's just so much confusion about what is, who is what, and who isn't. But if that, this is what it is, you know. You're completely right. We're we're women and we're men, and um, mashallah, alhamdulillah. And I I pray. My dua is that we have more people like yourself, brother, to to to, to do this and to help others and to bring up people bring up your children like this you know bring up your children to help others and to also be um passion passionate for the deen for islam um what can you know such a noble cause what is there anything that you require from sort of fellow youtubers or influencers in terms of like how can we participate how can we do more to help well i hope that whoever's watching this if they have a youtube channel whether you have one thousand whether you have 10,000, whether you have 80,000, we have 100,000 or whatever it is. I call upon every brother and sister on YouTube who have channels mm -hmm. and an audience to help us spread the word to their audience. If you cannot give, that's okay, but spread the word to the audience because you also get reward for sharing a good cause, for sharing the virtue. Yeah. And uh, contact me. Let's make a reaction video. Let's, uh, sorry, contact me. Let's make a video for, uh, uh, for this cause where each and every one of you say something and I can pull it in together and, and push it out there. I, so I feel like I'm not just doing this alone, even though I, I'm, I'm comfortable doing it alone. But I feel I'd like to work as a part of a team. I'm a part of an ummah. Where is the ummah? Yes. Now, I know there's a lot of other things happening in the world, whether it's, you know, the starvation in Yemen or whether something's happening with an earthquake or with, I understand all that. But, you know, I can't be everywhere at once. Right. I can only do whatever Allah SWT has willed for me to do. And I'm doing what Allah has willed for me to do. Whatever falls on my lap and I could help with, I try to gather the people around me. Let, let's, let's together do A. Let's together do B. Let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is we all have an audience. So help us spread the word to your audience. We give reaction videos attention. 
we give news on celebrities attention, whether it's Tate, whether it's Nico, whether whatever it is, we give that attention. We give things at times that don't require our attention, attention. Yes. So a cause that a cause to to build a masjid on a uh, for a, a build a masjid on a school ground that helps 50, 60 orphans every two years become hafad Quran has an unimaginable amount of barakah mm -hmm. and requires your attention. Yes. Imagine the reward you will receive from every prayer that make they make in that masjid, for every mm -hmm. dua that they utter, for every dhikr they make in that masjid, for every surah that they memorize until they finish the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. Imagine when these 50, 60 orphans become huffad and then go on to teach another 50, 60 or every year. Mm -hmm. It's an immense amount of barakah that could very well tip your scale of deeds on the day of judgment. This could tip your scale as it's perpetual and ongoing. Mm -hmm. So there's a hadith Sahil bin Sa'ad reported that the Prophet wasallam said, myself and the caretaker of an orphan will be in paradise like this. <laughs> and the Prophet wasallam held his two fingers together. Mm -hmm. So do you want to be with Rasulullah mm -hmm. Help an orphan. Don't just yeah. feed them, clothe them. Teach them. Let's teach them. Let's make you don't know. Maybe let 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 me just put this hypothetical thing out. Imagine that one of them becomes the next Imam Bukhari, the next Imam Muslim, the next Imam Nawawi, the next Imam Al Ghazali. Whoever it, imagine one of them becomes something like this, and we facilitated that. Imagine the amount of barakah we're going to get. Mm -hmm. I, I can't let that go. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a sinner. I'm, I, I admit I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. So I'm just are. doing what I can. So maybe it, this action or this this cause will help me tip my scale. And yes. I don't want to only tip my scale. I want to help. I want to help you tip your scale. And so that's why I'm calling upon everyone to stand beside me in this cause. Mm -hmm. It could tip our scale. And if we work collectively, inshallah, it will it will happen. Bi ta'ala. Inshallah. And we do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, brother. And I encourage I encourage everybody to, to jump on this cause. If you have an Instagram page or you like brother said a YouTube channel, share the link, you know, share, share the brothers cause and, and really get behind this and encourage others to do the same um, because it's such an important cause. Or if you don't want to do this cause, then look out for other things that you can help yeah. with, you know, look at other issues. Maybe there's something else that you've seen come to us and, and you know, we can try and, and do something better and, 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 and help other people. And I do get messages a lot from people that are, are struggling and struggling to clothe their, 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 families and to feed their families and it makes me sad but also makes me very blessed uh, and grateful for what I have um, and may Allah bring ease to all of our pain and our, our yeah. difficulties in life. Even with this charity I'm just, I'm just going to throw this in out there I don't know who, who it's going to uh, uh, entice uh, even though the charity I, I, I'm running it's, it's officially registered and everything it's not um, you know a waste of time I've put a lot of effort into this um, I'm searching if anyone's out there that has influence, wants to be an ambassador for this charity, that would help us, you know, it's out yes. there. For yeah. example, I'm just putting it, if the Muslim mum becomes one of the ambassadors, I, maybe I can say let's, let's have uh, spaces for three or four ambassadors for, for this charity. And, and when I'm talking about this charity, I'm thinking the charity as a whole, not just one cause. I'm talking about whatever cause that comes to us, we do our best as influencers to make it happen, to make it a reality. And we can go get on that ground when something is happening and go, hey, we've done this together. You know what I mean? Now, when you click on the, when you go to humanitarianhearts.org, which is the website, I have uh, ambassadors under our our the, uh, our team. So you can click on our team and you go, and there's, um, and there's no one as an ambassador there yet. So if anybody would like to donate their influence <laughs> on the channel, to help in 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 achieving certain things that come towards the charity and we're, we're happy to help anyone but obviously the more people we have working with us the more we can achieve yes that it's out there it's out yeah. there and don't do it for any i don't do i don't get paid for any of this i i'm actually losing money and losing time i could be spending with my family but i know that doing this for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if just I feed one person or I, I, I educate one person or I'm a part of educating or I'm the cause for doing some of this good, then maybe this is going to tip my scale. Yeah, inshallah. inshallah. That's the hope you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. 
Inshallah, inshallah, Allah accepts all of your efforts and all your mm. du'as. Um, how can sort of Muslim brothers and sisters become involved so we can collectively turn this vision into reality? I know we were talking about YouTubers and influencers, <laughs> but um, what about people that are are just just like you and me? Or well, yeah. we are influencers and YouTubers, but you know what I mean. Like, um, I, don't, just I don't think I'm any much of an influencer. <laughs> um, I'm I'm I got a long way to go. Um, but look, I, I've set up a GoFundMe, which uh, we can link maybe in the description. Yeah, it's, it's in the nice. chat. If someone can pin it in the chat, Jazakumullah khair. Um, you can yeah check that out. Um, you can learn more by going to humanitarianhearts.org, humanitarianhearts, plural, hearts.org. Uh, also, the cause is there and many photos are there too. Otherwise, I'm available via email for any questions at the one Muslim podcast at gmail.com. But let me just put it out there. We are, imagine this, uh, the goal is uh, 30,000 US dollars. Mm. If we could just gather 300 people around the world, 300 people to donate $100, we will reach this. This will be a reality. 300 people. Inshallah, that, that's donate. not... Uh oh don't know if it's me or the brother has disappeared. Uh, over... Sorry, yes. Yeah. I don't know if it was me or yourself. Sorry, 300. That's okay. Yeah, so you know, imagine that we can, you know, 300 people came together and we were able to donate $100 each. We would reach our goal. So is this doable in your mind? I think it's doable, but where are we going to find those 300 people that are going to share in this reward? So... You know, 300 people around the world. You know, I've got 1,700 subscribers. You've got, you know, 10 times me. But yeah. can 300 people come together and pay yeah. $100 each? Yes. Then we'll be able to reach this reward. Ten, you know, $100 US. Then we'll be able to reach uh, this this uh, 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 cause being done. And then we can focus on getting the drawings and starting this construction and getting it uh, working moving forward. And also, if anyone's interested... I'm happy to put a wall plaque up of all the 300 names. I'm happy to put a wall plaque, wall plaque, get a wall plaque made and present it to the school that these individuals believed in you. Mm -hmm. And imagine what the girls would feel. Yeah, girls, some dude from Australia brought <laughs> together all these other people from UK and from, you know, all these other places around the world, from Canada, from the US, 300 people came together to build the masjid so you can get up in the morning and pray to Hajjud. You can get up and do your five daily prayers. You could do um, Taraweeh during Ramadan without any issue. Mm. You'd have a wudu area, right? So that's out there. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to do whatever I can to, to make this a, a reality. Um, do we have a bit more time? I can probably share some of the photos. Do we have yeah, some time? Sure. We've got, I think, the 10, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, I can just, I'll add that on to yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so guys, this, this is the website I was telling you about, humanitarianhearts.org. And you go under projects and then there's a Quran Tahfir school there. This is some of the photos. So this is, this is us there. This is everybody that attended uh, a little bit after the fact, after some of the, the crowd left. Um, that's where it attended. So if we go down to photos, sure. let's click them. So there's, uh, and I know I'm in a different persona. Not many people <laughs> see me. It's yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is us sitting at the front. Um, and, uh, that was the, I don't know if you can see my, uh, mouse, but anyway, the sitting next to me is the mother of the, or the grandmother of the, the child that died and, uh, his uh, brothers on my right. Um, that's some of the, the, the girl, the ladies were in the back wearing yellow and orange. They are from that, uh, tahf, uh sorry, the uh, Majlis Ta'lim, the, the religious, a circle that they attend every week together as women. MashaAllah. And that is uh, uh, me and the father of the deceased presenting the uh, one of the guys that we established this school, we established this school with him, a plaque to say that we done this for you. So wow. this is a plaque that, that I designed, funnily enough. I designed <laughs> this plaque and uh, we put it forward and I got it made here in Australia and I took it up with me when I went to Indonesia. And like I said, I'm happy to do a plaque of all the 300 names. If we can get 300 people to donate 100 US dollars, inshallah ta'ala, and we can present that to the school, inshallah, and show the girls that there are people out there that care, that yeah. want you guys to succeed. And that's a very special photo to me. This is one of the girls, one of the orphan girls, actually. 
who came up to me. Yeah, she came up to me as soon as I arrived to the school at the gates. She came up to me and, and said, Salaamu Alaikum. Her English is a bit broken. I can't remember her name because she had an Indonesian name, but she was one of the most loveliest little girls I've ever met. And she was kind of clinging to me throughout the you know different parts of the day. She would see me from far and wave at me and I'll tell her, come here and I'll just give her a hug. She's lovely. And she's one of the orphans there that are studying the Quran at the moment and learning Arabic. Um, and that's us. That's her with her other friends that are also uh, orphans that are staying there. Upon opening the, the school, alhamdulillah, we have 12 to 15 girls already in-house, ready to go. And we have capacity to 50 to 60, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, that's amazing. Um, and and beside me is the father and the mother of the guy of the of the brother that passed away. So that's oh, that's the, yeah the parents of the of the deceased. Subhanallah. They look, they look so happy, mashallah. The girls look just and just they can see in their face how much yeah. th how happy they are. Yeah, they they don't get much international visitors um, to see someone come in and say you know we're we're helping you. Um, I think they feel proud and they feel valued. Um, mm -hmm. And again, look that the little girl to my to my right is just sitting there right next to me. So <laughs> yeah, she liked little hugs. She's she's young. She's probably only eight or nine. Wow. Yeah. And here they they had this thing going where three and zero. <laughs> I kind of found it interesting, <laughs> meaning they want to finish thirty juz of holy Quran. <laughs> <laughs> so that's their intention. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> They're like, oh, that's our indication that we want to finish three, zero. We want to finish 30 juz of Holy Quran. I said, inshallah. So that's why we took that photo. Um, and that's some of the local neighbors as well who came that were invited who wanted photos with us. Um, so, yeah, you know, they're standing behind us. Um, and that's uh, Ustad Zaid, who I communicated with me, my longtime friend of 15 years, who we've supported to establish this school. And if... I'm doing whatever I can to continue supporting him as well with what he's doing in terms of dawah while I'm in the, while while I ever visit Indonesia. We're always in communication, alhamdulillah. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's the kind of the group photo um, after a few people left, but there were still some people hanging around in the back. Mm. Um, and that was uh, yeah a bit of a tent that was set up at the beginning. That's that was taken just before it was getting uh, starting, and to the left actually, to the left you see that there's a corridor or a pathway. That is where the masjid is going to be built, behind that building. Great, okay. Yeah, behind that building. It looks beautiful, mashallah. Yeah, and that's Ustaz Zaid with the plaque, uh, you know, having a in, in, welcoming everybody. Uh, I don't. These photos aren't really in order. Um, the, the, the girls uh, got together a week before and they learned a few nasheeds and they were singing some nasheeds to us oh, to entertain okay. us as the guests between all the talking that was going on. So, yeah, we didn't have great microphones, unfortunately. There's going to be video coming out with that very soon. Um, keep an eye out on my channel. I'm putting it up very soon, maybe in the next uh, 24 hours or maybe next week, depending on how much I can get through. Um, yeah, that's them sitting together. They were singing some nasheeds for us. Um, and that's when, uh, you know, uh, the family of the deceased, and that's the brother of the deceased, actually, with Ustaz Zaid um, mm -hmm. up on stage in a kind of, they were thanking them and that's where there's a bit more women that were involved and if i don't know if you can see there in, on the screen there's many women also sitting behind them on the floor yeah, throughout the I pathways think. it was all full yeah the whole pathway was full of women sitting on the floor um mashallah it's it's good to see that the, there's a there's a draw when it comes to something with islam yes and uh, that uh, we also thought to pull it a step further Everyone who comes to the opening ceremony does not leave empty-handed. So alhamdulillah, we got the father of the deceased involved, handing out free copies of the Holy Quran to also uh, encourage the neighbors, if they want to learn, to also come and, and attend classes if they wish to. And they all got a copy of the Quran. Wow, mashallah, that's great. That's beautiful to see. Um, and that's me. I was giving a small little talk just on the benefits of charity and what we've done. Alhamdulillah. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, and that's the plaque. So yeah, everyone can have a read. It says the Munajid family led by Samir Munajid in collaboration with Rogers Foundation and Humanitarian Hearts have generously contributed towards establishing a perpetual charity, Sadaqa Jariya, in honor of their son, Abdul Qadir Samir Munajid 
and Rami Najmuddin, founder of uh, Humanitarian Hearts, in consultation with Ustad Zaid Bahmid, has selected Nurul Quran as the beneficiary of this noble endeavor. And we have the Humanitarian Hearts logo and the mention of Rogers Foundation Gym that assisted us with the boxing event in the beginning. Wow, mashallah. So, um, yeah, that was. Uh, so, if anybody wants to donate, please don't, don't, don't delay. We we would love it. Um, and as I said, if we can get three hundred people, um, you can also press donate here on the button. It takes you straight to um, the the charity. Sorry, the GoFundMe. So far, we're sitting at where is it thirteen hundred and seventy five. So, you know, we got yeah. forty five. It's in Australian dollars, I know, but it's in. We need forty five thousand Australian dollars, which is thirty thousand US. Mashallah. Please, That's everybody, all. and donate. Even if you can't donate a hundred dollars, if you can donate ten dollars, whatever you can donate, um, I'm sure it will it will, it will contribute to to this and, um. Inshallah, you reach your goal, brother. Inshallah. And this is the entrance of the masjid there, which I put on the, the GoFundMe. And that's how I told you the women were sitting on the footpaths. That's all there, filled with women that came to attend. Um, yeah. Inshallah. That's it. And that's the area we're going to build the masjid right there. There you go. There are the photos. And you can see that there's fish ponds. But a video is coming out, inshallah, soon. A video will be coming out. Um, yeah. yeah. So the, the area would be approximately 200 to 250 meters squared, inshallah ta'ala. So yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. Um, that's that's wonderful, and um, I'm really happy that you're you're doing that. There's, there's, I'm leaving the links in the description for viewers to go and contribute. Um, if if you if there's anything else that you require, I'm sure Brother Rami will be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, please check out his the YouTube channel and his instagram page the one muslim it's such an amazing cause in the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and charity is like we've said it's part of our deen so as little or as lot whatever you can give please give um uh, for for this masjid or, and for other causes to um it'll, it'll count towards you you'll end up with countless rewards for for this we've talked about the baraka already so um yes thank you brother for coming on and sharing that and thank, thank you. you for doing such a good noble act for um the ummah and for these these ghettos and you can see how happy they are um is there any sort of closing statements that, that you would like to say before before we finish off uh not really um like i said uh if anyone's out there if you want, want to help to create a video any youtubers um who want to assist with creating a video please contact me let's cut a video together inshallah and and, and try to push it Maybe we can insert it at the back, at the rear of any videos that we make moving forward until this uh, uh, goal is reached. Other than that, Jazakumullah uh, Khair. May Allah bless you all. Thank you for watching and supporting the Muslim mum. Um, she's doing an amazing job. She's got my support and uh, her husband has become a very close friend of mine offline, alhamdulillah. So, you know, it's uh, just calling each other to towards a virtue and towards goodness. And that's what it's about. As a ummah, it strengthens us as Muslims together, as brothers and sisters in Islam. And just if you if you can't help, at least make dua that we can achieve this goal. Yes, inshallah, and you you will be in my duas, um, and inshallah you do reach this goal. Um, and anything I can do to help, um, brother, I, I will try my best. Inshallah. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm I'm so happy to have you on, and it's so nice to start my morning off this way. It's made me feel all happy and tingly inside, and um, giving my heart and my soul. Um, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It, it makes you feel good when you talk about these things. So even if you don't want to contribute, talk about it. You know, spread the word, yeah. uh, encourage others to do it. it. It honestly, it makes you feel good. So thank you, um, and I hope you have. I think it's evening time for you, so I'm sure it's like time to go to bed soon. <laughs> No, well, you, you've actually been the highlight of my day. I've had a oh, very stressful couple of days, but oh, alhamdulillah. No. Barakallahu feekum. Um, Allah bless you and your family. Um, you're always in my dua. And forgive me for any shortcomings, inshallah. No, thank you. May Allah bless you and your family too, brother. Um, and it was so lovely to see you. Thank you. Jazakallah, everyone. Um, have a, a beautiful day. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.